Florida State at Notre Dame, 1993. Seminoles in the final seconds trying to win. But Charlie Ward's pass is batted down by the Irish cornerback Sean Wooden. Notre Dame wins 31-24. And for once, one of those games was as good as the promise. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. Welcome to the Florida Citrus Bowl, which is the location of the rematch game, if you will. It's a little more neutral than Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, but not a whole lot. The reach of Notre Dame sometimes can be astounding during a college football season, but they do get the adrenaline going wherever they go because they are season makers as well as season breakers. Just ask the Seminoles a year ago. This game was a sellout on June 26th. As Notre Dame comes to town to play Florida State, Bob Greasy, Lou Holtz has had three weeks to get ready for this ball game. Well, and he's five and three, but you know, this is a very dangerous ball club, even though they are five and three. They're unranked, they're a big underdog, but they know that a win here today against sixth ranked Florida State will gain them a lot of respect. Somebody said that truck pulled in behind the stadium Wednesday night was full of mirrors. <laughs> Florida State's got a got more athletes probably than Notre Dame. Well, that's very true. Bobby Bowden said that uh, he's concerned about the inconsistency this year, especially on offense. But he also knows that last year he had better athletes, more speed, and he got beat, and he got beat in the trenches. He got whooped. They were very physical. That's the key today in the lines. Who's going to be tougher in the lines? And we're told that Ray Zellers is going to be back to play some Make fullback. Make a big difference. Yep. Good blocker, good solid man. So we're about ready. The weather is terrific. It's uh, in the high 70s right now. It should be very comfortable today. So the sun breaks out from behind the overcast right on schedule for the kickoff. Florida State's Dan Mowry will kick to Notre Dame's Emmett Mosley. They play on grass at the Florida Citrus Bowl and we are ready to go. That's hooked sharply to the left side and kicked out of bounds. So not a good start for another bad moment for another Florida State place kicker. Wide left this time. Historically, they've been wide right as this young man comes running onto the field for the Fighting Irish, Ron Paulus. His numbers for 1994. Seven times he's been intercepted. The last time we saw him was at Boston College, and he took a pummeling. Randy Kinder and Mark Edwards open in the backfield for Notre Dame behind Paulus. And as usual, they've got Derek Mays wide to the bottom of your picture. So from the 35-yard line, Notre Dame's first play of the game. Forming, diving tackle by number 44, Daryl Bush for Florida State. Randy Kinder and Mark Edwards open at the position, but we expect to see at fullback today Ray Zellers. Derek Mays remains always the big play man for Notre Dame. 6'1", 205, Junior, Indianapolis. Oscar McBride and the other tight end seldom see the ball. result number 90 Derek Alexander the first man through defensively for Florida State it is the offensive front for Notre Dame that won that war a year ago up at South Bend as they ran the ball there have been a lot of people who have been moved around in fact nobody you see on the screen now was in the starting offensive front three games ago at Boston College at the same position at the same position right He's moved people from here to there and yonder, trying to find the kind of chemistry, the combination that'll work. Hand it off as Collis on a deep drop. Give it a kinder is cut down by Derek Brooks, the All-American linebacker. And Notre Dame is short of the first down in their first possession. There's a look at Brooks, the linebacker. First three plays for Holt. Three running plays. He's going to get... Uh, if, it, if the punt works the way it should work, Florida State's going to get the ball deep in their own position for Notre Dame's first defensive stand. 
James Colsey is the deep man for Florida State. The punt by Brian Perry. From the 13-yard line, Colsey across the 20 and out to about the 21. And so now it is Florida State's turn. They will put the ball in play as Danny Connell comes to the field to lead the team with these numbers for 1994. It jumps at you that he has 14 touchdowns but 12 interceptions. In the backfield behind him as the Seminoles come out rather slowly, you're going to have Warwick Dunn and Zach Crockett. And put the ball on the 22 for this first snap for the Florida State Seminoles. Kaz McCorvey is the leading receiver for Florida State. In fact, the primary receiver so far. They don't have that core of receivers they have had in times past. And now back will throw on the first play. Dumps the ball off to Zach Crockett, the fullback. And Crockett is out across the 30 to the 31. He picked up nine yards on the play. The offensive front for Florida State is anchored by their center, Clay Scheiber. It's a good one for a quarter and a bad one for a half a quarter. The inconsistency has been a problem for the Seminoles, but they look pretty solid in their runaway win at Georgia Tech. All right, second down and six now for Florida State. And Connell gives it to Dunn again, and he's got daylight on the right side. He's got another first down as he runs the ball to the 46-yard line. And good seal blocking on the right side. Got him around the corner. This kid is tough, Keith. He is not very big. He only weighs 178 pounds, 5'9". But he is dangerous. He is second in the nation in yards per rush at 7.8 yards per rush, and that is outstanding. Only Kajana Carter at Penn State rushes for more yardage each, each carry. Second down and 10. Mainly because I suppose the offensive lines have been inconsistent, but the Florida State offensive front right there just opened the door for Warwick Dunn, and he picks up another Seminole first down at the Irish 41. Shiver 53. Entire 66 double team Oliver to begin with. Then the center comes off on sample 36. That's a team block. You go into the man on the line of scrimmage, and one of them comes off. This time it was Shiver getting the block on the linebacker. Connell gives it to the redshirt freshman Rock Preston. Great name, Rock and Zach. And they'll whack you. And he picked up five. They'll make it four. It'll be second down and six. One of the things that Notre Dame is going to try to do, here's a corner right here. He's lined up. Watch as a corner is going to come from the outside. He's lined up short side of the field. If Cannell would have had a pass on and turned his back, that could very well have been a sack. Maybe something new for Notre Dame with all that time to work on. It. Here they come. Got him. Jeremy Semple came right down the middle of the highway. The inside linebacker. They just overran Crockett, the fullback. He had no chance. So many of them were coming through there. Well, Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, like a lot of coordinators will say, if you're moving the ball on the offensively, I'm going to try and stop you. And if I can't stop you without blitzing, I'm going to send more guys and you can block. Loss is back to the 35, where it is third down and 15, and the Irish are in the nickel package now. Cannell pumps it, throws it to the ground, incomplete. Nobody open. Actually, six DBs, and uh, there was nobody to throw it to. Right, to Keith, when you only rush three and you drop eight, they had uh, a lot of people covering the receivers and there was just nobody to throw it to. So here's Maury in the punt. Sean Liss pulled a groin muscle quite severely in the game against Georgia Tech. Maury stepped in and averaged 43 yards for the game. First kick was 33 yards, but it was very good. This is another very good punt, but it takes a 
bounce into the end zone and will come out to the 20 yard line. That was a 51 yard punt. Marshall Holtz had a play called, but he had the wrong group in the game and he was talking to Mays as if you were supposed to be in there. You know, it was your group that was supposed to be in. All is back to throw it. Goes deep down the middle. The pass is almost caught, but bounced and intercepted by Devin Bush for Florida State. The pass intended for Charles Stafford. He got his hands on it, flipped it up in the air. Eventually, it fell into the arms of Devin Bush for the well, interception. This was something that they talked about. First down play, play action to the top left of your screen. They wanted Stafford to be inside of Abraham, number two. Abraham has him covered well, and Bush gets back and gets the deflection for the interception. So the strong safety supports on the play and gets his reward. Well, he supported on the play action fake that was might be a run. Then he saw, well, it's not going to be run. Then Bush got back and made a play on the deflection. Outstanding play. Good. Wayne Messam, number 89, is in the ball game. Now he walks out of the shotgun as they shift into an eye. And here comes a fake reverse. Dunn kept the ball. But the reverse worked well enough on the Irish linebackers that Dunn sneaks through the left corner and takes it to midfield for a first down. Pick up 11 yards. The reverses this year for Florida State really have not done very well. It's almost as if Bowden has a reputation for trick plays. He had to do that when he didn't have skilled players that had speed anymore. He doesn't need the trick plays. He's got players with ability. That's six, yard, six carries for 54 yards for Dunn. And he's got it again and will lose a yard this time as firing in is number 49. Iron Coven and Paul Grassmanis, 93. It's like your uh, reputation precedes you with Bowden. Everybody's looking for the reverses and the trick plays, and he just fakes the reverse now, and he can gain more yardage than he can with the reverse. Second down, 11, and the quarter is over. So we played 15 minutes at the Florida Citrus Bowl, and it's no score between Notre Dame and Florida State. We go to the second quarter of play. No score in the ball game between the Seminoles and the Fighting Irish, and we're in Orlando for this ball game. Of course, that game a year ago, which Notre Dame won 31 to 24. Florida State was voted the national champions ahead of Florida State, and that's been a bit of bile ever since. But different folks are playing this game that played a year ago in many instances. It's second down, 11 now, and the ball is given to Dunn. And Warwick Dunn, having a big day, runs the football to the Notre Dame 38-yard line. That's a pickup of 13 yards. He's now got 67 yards in the ball game. Watch the clock. Notre Dame has used all three of their timeouts. Florida State has used one. It's, it, it's our feeling that the clock has been starting pretty quickly, forcing the offense to use the timeouts. From the 28 now, first down for Florida State. No score. Here they come. Canell's passing away. Offensive line held up pretty well that time, and Kez McCorby with his first catch of the day at the 20. We look at the first quarter numbers. Florida State with 18 plays. Both had a turnover, which didn't hurt anybody. Total yardage in favor of Florida State. And the rushing yards, big in favor, 65 to 13. Notre Dame has to run the football to be successful today. Right now, their problem is defending. It's second down and two as Florida State sits on the Irish 20. Canell pitches to Dunn. Dunn keeps it after making the reverse. Turns for the marker. He's close. First down at the 27-yard line. I mean, 17-yard line. This is Dunn. Warwick Dunn all the way to the six. First and goal, and it's the first real threat 
of a touchdown in the game. And we've got 12 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. No score in the game. Goodell back for the corner. No. Defending over there for Notre Dame was 17, Brian McGee against McCovey. McGee's 200 pounder, and he was able to keep him off the corner. Well, this is a matchup that they want. McGee is the strong safety. 21 there is Bobby Taylor, but this is the matchup they wanted, but pretty good coverage. That's a dangerous throw if he would have thrown it lower. That's a good incompletion for Cannell. McGee used to be a uh, cornerback before he moved to free safety this year. Rock Preston is in there at tailback now. Fresh ledge. He's got the ball. And he fights his way to the two-yard line. So he got at least half of it, maybe a little more on that carry. It'll be third down and goal from the two and a half be interesting to see now what Mark Richt and uh, Bobby Bowden, the offensive coordinator, and Bowden come up with. They've had some inconsistencies. Canal has thrown some interceptions this year. It'd be interesting to see if they let him throw it or if they run it in, try to run it in. I would think they'd try to run it in. Dunn is back in there. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator for the Irish. Third and goal from the two. Here they come. Dunn's got it. Keeps it. Heading for the corner. Played just right. It'll be fourth down, and it's Bobby Taylor, number 21, the first man to get there. McGee mocked up. Tried to trick him. Instead of trying to uh, try to go straight at him and try to beat him with your ability, the choice was we'll try and fool him. Fake the reverse. This is the third time they've done this, and two defensive backs are there. Taylor misses. McGee finishes it off. So Dan Maury, who went through that miserable year two years ago, Scott Bentley came in to replace him, and now he has the job back from Bentley and hits it. Good. He knocks a 20-yarder down, and Florida State finally gets on the scoreboard to lead three to nothing. They're expecting a crowd somewhere around 73,000 for today's ball game. Sold out as of June. Mowry got a big old load off his back with that 20-yard field goal to put the Seminoles on top three to nothing. Emmett Mosley, number five, is the man waiting. He is a sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, and if I remember correctly, that's where Scott Bentley came from to go to Florida State. High hanging kickoff. Little short, eight-yard line. Mosley. Pretty good return all the way out to about the 35 yard line. Second down, call it six. From the 39. Stafford almost got himself in the neutral zone. That ball is over the head of the intended receiver, Sekai Champion. He was hit as the ball passed through the neighborhood, but there was no way in the world he was going to catch that football. Take a look at, uh, I believe this is Abraham right here. Look as he's looking into the quarterback. The, re the pattern is the inside receiver is going to break to the outside. Watch as the quarterback, Abraham, looks all the way. This could have been picked off. Yep. More likely intercepted than caught by the receiver. Yeah, when you're throwing that and Paulus is young, you've got to look at the outside coverage, man, to make sure he goes off and plays deep. That time he did not. Third down and six. Gets the ball away and throws it away, and he will take some punishment. As Todd Rebo, number 48, linebacker, came in and laid a lick on him along with Reinhard Wilson. And the Florida State defense gets a half. is out of Massillon, Ohio. James Colsey, a sophomore from Miami, is waiting for it from Florida State. So the Seminole defense asserting itself in that series. Spinner might have a little room to run it. 
It's back across the 30-yard line. 45-yard punt. 9.53 to go in the first half. It is third down and 12. When he raises his leg like that, he's telling him, snap it when you want. He snaps it to uh, Preston, the tailback, and Preston takes off down the sidelines with a huge gain. Rock Preston with one of those Bobby Bowden gimmick plays. He snapped it right straight to the tailback, and away he flew. This is one of the better gimmick plays. Watch as the ball goes straight to number 24. A trap block by Tyre, number 66, unsuspecting. The men in the secondary are dropping back for their pass coverage. They saw the ball in the air, and Cannell did a nice job of acting as though he received the ball. 46 yards later, Preston is shoved out of bounds. LaRon Moore had, had the man. He had to make the play, and he just simply didn't make it. And it's first down for Florida State. The ball is at the 26-yard line of Notre Dame. Warwick Dunn is back in the backfield, and he's going to lose a yard or so as the Irish defenders rise up and smack him down. Oliver Gibson leading the defensive surge. Dunn has 80 yards, and Preston 81 yards of the ball game. So Bobby's tailbacks are doing pretty well. Yes, they are. Bobby lost the offensive coordinator off last year's team. Uh, Brad Scott went to be the head coach at South Carolina. Mark Rick is now the head, uh, the offensive coordinator. Calls the plays, except he says, well, every now and then, Bobby says, let me take a series. And usually when it gets inside the 10, the head coach likes to call the plays, too. Of course. Of course. <laughs> that hasn't changed at any level. Second down, 11. Here comes the pressure. Canal running, gets away, throws, complete. the 13-yard line. Omar Ellison made that catch on his knees. That was a good call, whoever called it, because Notre Dame and Bob Davey, the coordinator, says, you're moving on us. We're going to blitz you to try and force a bad play. But they blitz. Quarterback gets outside the pocket. Ellison has one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. The quarterback is out there near him. It should be an easier throw. Throws it low and away in a nice pickup. Yes. 13-yard line, first down. Warwick Dunn has the ball. Number 22, Sean Wooden wrestled him out of bounds. Not much on the play. Probably getting kind of warm down on the field by now. <laughs> Earlier in the week, the weather was kind of bad in South Bend, rainy and kind of cool. So Holtz took him indoors, turned up the heat, and had all the players wore, wear thermals just to get them ready for this weather and the humidity down here in Orlando. So they had some guys dropping out about the end of practice. It's been around 80, 85 degrees all week. Cannell back out of the shotgun, has good time, and rolls over the head of Andre Cooper. 20, what is it like now as the sun's been out for a couple of hours? Keith, it's not just a tad warm. It is hot and humid. I'd say it's probably in the upper, upper 70s or low 80s, and it's very humid. You know, the Florida State people on the sideline when they came out for pregame warm-up were lamenting the fact that there was cloud cover and a lot of breeze because they wanted to be hot. They felt like they, they were more accustomed to this humid weather, and Notre Dame wasn't. So they're glad the sun came out. One out of four in third down conversions. Third and nine. Here they come. Cannell gets it away, and it is incomplete. Defending on the play, Lamont Moore, the pass intended for E.G. Green. This crowd is about 65% pro Seminole, and they didn't like it. Bad route. E.G. Green just does not get open. Nope. He did not. So Dan Maury is in. And he has a 20-yarder, and he's going to be looking at 30-31 here. They don't hang that one on the quarterback. That was one-on-one uh, -on -one and a bad route. Bending those QBs. 30-yard try. 
good. So Maury is two for two. At 7.07 to play in the first half, it is now a 6-0 lead for the Seminoles. Look at the last Florida State scoring drive. Uh, four passes, four rushes. But they're not getting it in the end zone. That's right. Maury kicking from the 35. Mosley will come up to the 8. And he's back to the 27-yard line with the return. Mark Edwards and Lee Becton, the backfield now for the Irish. Total plays in the game, Florida State's at 34, Notre Dame on the 16. This is a pretty good run by Becton, his longest of the day. Picked up seven yards, Corey Fuller brought him down. Notre Dame has had the ball five times, and the second time they had it, they had it on the Florida State 30-yard line, missed a field goal, and have not done much with it since then. The one play, the interception, was a first down play that turned into three points for Florida State. Second and three. The fullback, Edward, to midfield, and a first down. His first bounce was about the 48-yard line. Here goes Lee Beckton again. And suddenly the Notre Dame ground game finds a spark. And the Irish come surging down the field to a first down at the Florida State 27. Watch the offensive line. Leahy is 72. He's going to be blocking on Wadsworth, number 85. There's a huge hole in there. Ziegler gets a nice block, 77. It's called experience and leadership. Becton and Zellers are back. Nothing this time as Zellers drops into the line. Will come out of there with one yard. The two previous plays were the longest plays of the day for the Irish. First, there was the 14-yard run, and then the 25-yard run. Colts lost three of his top offensive linemen from last year. Taylor, Ruddy, and Norman. Lost three of them. Then he had injuries in his offensive line earlier in the year, and that has only been one of the offensive problems. Sam Coward just came off the field for the Seminoles, shaken up a bit. Kinder and Zellers in the backfield for the Irish. Second down and nine. Wallace looking. He threw the ball right to Derrick Brooks. There's an old saying in golf, if you're going to lay up, lay up. There's an old saying in quarterbacks, don't throw it to the guy in the other colored shirt. I mentioned some of the problems was in the offensive line. The other is you just can't go into a season without a quarterback that has taken some snaps. Paulus is talented, but he is new. He is inexperienced. He throw. He saw Derek Mays, but look at the number of red shirts or maroon or whatever you call the uh, color. Look at all the shirts around that football. He's trying to make something out of every play. He's telling him right now, son, if the play's not there, throw it away. You can't. There are some plays that just aren't going to turn out like we worked on them in practice. And if that's the case, throw it away, and we'll come back with another play. One of the Seminoles is shaken up on the play. Who is it? Abraham. He's all right. He is a tough little guy, boy. He scored eight touchdowns in his career from a cornerback position. Here he is outside the pocket. He's trying to get it. Now, right now, he's open, but watch as it's going to close up. See, the, the defensive linebacker in his face, he threw it over his head. You think you can make a play. Great quarterbacks always think you can make great plays. You've got to know when not to try. This is Warwick Dunn tiptoeing around in among all of those great big people. And the 178-pounder was going to come out of there with about eight yards. There's Ron Paulus. Out, outstanding uh, career in high school, the top quarterback coming out a few years ago, a couple years ago, 17 yards, two interceptions. You just can't go into a season it's and, not have, and have the problems. 
uh, if he had a strong offensive line, Keith, and if he would have had Becton and Zellers with him all the way, a young, inexperienced quarterback maybe could have done some better things. But you can't ask an inexperienced quarterback to carry your team when you don't have anybody else around him to help. Ball is on the 29-yard line now. It is second down and 10. A chance to take the lead. Fifty six yards. That'll go into the books officially as 57 yards. Scott Singer now is in with an opportunity to put the Irish in front. Charles Stafford holds it. John Spicklemeyer snaps it. Notre Dame leads 7 to 6. 2.45 to go in the first half. Earlier in the game, I pointed out when the cornerbacks are up in bump and run right here and you're in the short side of the field. See, this is the short side of the field right here. You got to be careful about this guy coming in from that look. The quarterback has got to keep his eyes on him. He's got his back turned to him. He's got tons of time. But anytime you're at the line of scrimmage as a quarterback and you see the corners up in the short side of the field, you better be knowing where that guy is after the snap. Taylor is a big play guy, and he just made a great play. Kyvinger McMillan makes his first appearance of the ball game, number 33. He will go back and be a receiver under the kickoff, along with Omar Ellison. Ball is taken by Ellison upfield, a short kick. Fumbles, fumbles the ball, and they're going to call him down. Florida State will keep it. Have a look and see what we can see. Yeah, I think it's a good call. It looked to me like the ball did not come out early, and then I didn't see it out until he was on the ground. That touchdown by the Notre Dame kicking team was the 35th special teams defensive touchdown under Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. First down at midfield. This is done again. And give him six yards on the carry. A minute 25 to go in the first half. Notre Dame leading Florida State 7 to 6. And Warwick Dunn now on his 17 carries has 112 yards. Big time rushing for Dunn. It's a strange game, Keith. The, the rushing, the running game for Florida State has been good. But yet, defensively, Notre Dame has sacked Cannell four times. It's Crockett and Preston now in the backfield. Cannell throws good. Ellison. And pushed out of bounds down around the Irish 32-yard line. Ivory Covington, a freshman defender at right cornerback on the boundary side, made the defensive play. Florida State stung by the defensive touchdown for the Irish trying to come back down the field after two field goals. Florida State with one timeout remaining, and you must remember that Notre Dame burned theirs in the first quarter. Forty-seven seconds as he comes up for the snap. Blitz coming. Passes away. McCorby. Here's McCorby to about the 21. It's a nice read by Cannell. Calling timeout. That's the last one. Cannell seems to be uh, 
becoming more aware. Watch here, the two inside linebackers are gonna blitz. Then you're gonna get out here, everything you want, man to man, one on one. If you get the ball to him quickly, now stop it right here. Look at all this. If this player can make something happen out here, you've got one on one, could go for a big play. You beat the bits, blitz, you see it coming, you got it to your, your number one receiver, just couldn't break, break loose. They marked the ball back outside the 23 where McCorvey's knee first touched the ground. That's Preston. He's got it. He's out of bounds at the three. Boy, these two tailbacks are tearing them up. Preston's going to be right at 100 yards himself. Give some credit to that offensive line. Yeah, both backs now over 100 yards in the first half. Watch the offensive line for the Seminoles. The left tackle sets up. Now he's going to run inside. That's 48 win. 77 doing the blocking is Hernandez. That's Crockett, the fullback, and on first and goal from the three, stacked up at the two, be a 19-yard field goal try. It's good. So at halftime at the Florida Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida State 9, Notre Dame 7. Now here's John Saunders. Well, we said that at the beginning that Notre Dame was very dangerous. If they win this game, they get a lot of respect. Uh, Florida State has dominated in every area, uh, but they have uh, not dominated when they got inside the 10 and inside the 5-yard line, and Notre Dame is hanging around. Holtz is going to make some good adjustments at halftime, and anything could happen here in the second half, uh, and Florida State needs to be concerned. Got to get some touchdowns. We're ready to go with the second half of play. Florida State 9 and Notre Dame 7. And the Irish will kick it off. Shenja knocks it back inside the 5 to the goal line. It's Rock Preston, one of those tailbacks. And he got away from the first would-be tackler to bring the ball out to about the 22-yard line. Here's a look at the first half stats uh, dominated by Florida State. Uh, 261 yards of total offense to only 80. Notre Dame was only rushed for 63 yards. Only four first downs for Notre Dame, 17 for Florida State, and the turnovers, two apiece, and both teams have scored. Florida State possessions in the first half, they had seven of them, and they scored on three of their last four, albeit only field goals from inside the five-yard line. Preston's the tailback, gets the ball. And number 54 takes his feet away, Justin Goheen. But again, it's big yardage on first down. And when you're running for six, seven, eight yards on first down, you're doing pretty well. Well, Goheen, number 54, the middle linebacker, the heart and soul of this uh, defense for the Irish. He has led, you see him just slides down the line, avoids the block, and gets the tackle. He has led this team in tackles the last two years. <laughs> First down uh, rush average for Florida State so far in the ball game is better than five and a half yards. That's pretty good. Or did he get some blocking? Or did he get some blocking? My goodness. Number 56. Well, Shiver got a big block for it. Chad Bates, I think it was, well, got a big block. Pierre Cooper, the wide receiver, got yeah. a block too. He came around the corner. It was nothing but green in front of him. Uh -huh. Watch the left side. Tar is 66. 77 is Hernandez. Crockett is 32. There he goes down. Now watch this block right there. That's Taylor being blocked by Cooper. And you got green on the outside working for you. Preston now has 134 yards on nine carries. And this is Tiger McMillan getting his first scrimmage action of the day. And McMillan at one time was thought to be a starter. I mean, one of the stars. But 
tell you what, uh, Dunn showed up last year to put the heat on, and here comes Preston this year. Well, McMillan, as you mentioned, has had some injuries and problems in the past. Uh, that is just outstanding right there. Jeremy now had to leave the ball game, hobbling off the field. 236 yards of rushing were just in the beginning of the third quarter. Bar Bert Berry checks in. He had the big play early on in the ball game. Remember, McMillan stays in there at tailback, and wham! He gets a greeting from uh, Alton Malden, number 42, year 20. Keith Warwick Dunn has a mild shoulder bruise. I don't think it's anything very serious. He's still on the sideline, but with Preston running so well, I don't think it's a major problem for the Florida State offense at the moment. Keith? That's why we have McMillan in then. Probably doesn't want to come out there, though, does he, Lynn? Having a good day like this, you want to stay in. Third down and seven. Doesn't hurt too much when you're headed for 150 or better. Here they come again. Here's McCorby. Tackle made by Bobby Taylor. He's short of the first down on the reception by a couple of yards. All right, we're looking at a fourth and two. The ball is at the Notre Dame 27-yard line, and the Seminoles are going with Crockett and Dunn in the backfield with Cannell. So Dunn's back in there. He's got it. He didn't make it, I don't think. Justin Goheen was the man that laid the lick on him and you could hear it almost in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, it was a thump. There's Goheen, he's all the way on this side. Watch as he's gonna come way across the formation. None of the defensive linemen allow an offensive lineman to get through. There's a gapping hole there, but so is Goheen. Good call by Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. Ten plays, no points. Notre Dame takes over. First down, their own 27. Zellers and Beckton in the backfield. This is Beckton. And he runs it out to the 32 for a pickup close to four and a half. the tackle. The key there was good offensive line pass blocking by the Irish. Gave Paulus enough time to sit in the pocket and pick up a first down. Exactly at midfield. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. A little pitch out to Beckton. And Beckton all the way to the Florida State 35. Another first down. This is Beckton. You don't arm tackle him. He ran through a couple of Seminoles and picks up another Irish first down. Check in with Lynn. He's go coming out into the field for the second half. Lou Holtz told me that he told his kids that you can play with these guys. He said the, no, the uh, defense of Florida State is overplaying the pass. He feels like they're going to either be able to run the ball well, but he really wanted to reemphasize to his kids that you're in this ball game, you can win it if you eliminate the mistakes. Keith? First down at the 24 of Florida State. This is Beckton. And he's to the 19. Close to five. Second, about five and a half. Back in behind the line of scrimmage, Derek Alexander. 
Derek Alexander had a big game a year ago against the Irish, and he just made his third big play of this game. Nothing fancy either, just overpowering the uh, lineman in front of him. Take a look, here he is right here. He's just gonna come through the uh, offensive man. Strong and quick. Third and eight at the 22. Paulus, tied in down the middle. He's got him, he doesn't see it. Now he throws it in complete. Tried to dump it off to Zellers, the fullback, and couldn't get it to him, and he had Oscar McBride breaking free downfield and never got a chance to find him. Right, well, Keith, he didn't see him, just didn't see him. Irish offense box down. Scott Sinja is out. They're going to put it down at about the 28-yard line. Make it 29 and call it 39 yards. So quite a regain the lead. Got a hurry. And he squeezed it through. And Notre Dame goes back in front, 10 to 9. At 4.48 to play in the third quarter. Notre Dame used 5.58 of time in keeping Florida State's offense in the barn and took the lead on the 39-yard field goal, 10-9. High kick to Tiger Lake Millen, almost got it over his head. Right the end zone. Down at the 10-yard line, that's a pretty good play by John Bergman. First down, ball at the 10. Dunn and Crockett in the backfield. Give it to Dunn. Down at the line of scrimmage. This is Florida State's worst starting point. This is one of those moments in a ball game where the Irish defense is going to lay its ears back and try to jump them right here and try to establish field position. If they can make them kick out around the five-yard line, they've done their job. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, both teams in the second half on their first possession came out with pretty nice offensive drives although neither got a touchdown both of them held it for at least 10 plays coming up on four minutes to go in the third quarter done Keeps it. breaks loose big run warwick done having a huge day Again, they're going to fake a reverse. A little toss to Dunn. They fake it to the man coming around. That holds the linebackers just a tad and the defensive backs as well. Some good blocking at the initial point and then just the skill. This kid is outstanding, Keith. Uh, Bobby Bowden says uh, he's got it. I don't know. Last year he says he's got it. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, he's got it. First down, Cannell goes, good. Kez McCorby. Put the ball at the Notre Dame, 45, first down. Corby looks like he may have been limping, and it's a nice throw by Cannell. First down, passing, both wide receivers running outs. Florida State needs to get the confidence of Cannell, as you see. McCorby limping off. He is their, he is number two all time in their receptions at uh, Florida State. One of only two men to get 200 yards in a game. The other, of course, being Ron Sellers. Going big, too long. Omar Teller Ellison uh, running down the middle of the field on a post. Had gained a half a step on Ivory Covington, but the ball was well over his head. It's a tough uh, miss, too, for uh, for Cannell because they were in a blitz situation. He had man-to-man -man coverage yep. with his receiver running downfield. It's just throw it in there, and it's just part of the inconsistency that has bothered Cannell this year. Florida State now total 64 plays to 35 for Notre Dame, but the Irish lead 10 to 9. Second down and 10 to the sidelines. It is too high. 
Andre Cooper was the man in the neighborhood, but it was well over his head. Talking with Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, he says, a uh, lot of difference this year. He says, you don't have to worry about that guy back there scrambling from quarterback. Of course, he was talking about Charlie Ward. Cannell has uh, started his nine or ten games. He started a couple of games in the past when Charlie was hurt. And he started all the games this year. 16 seconds remaining, third quarter, third and ten. Here they come again. Lipson, Lipson, Lipson. Beats him with it. Pass caught by Omar Ellison. And he will have a first down for the Seminoles. But obviously, the approach that Notre Dame is pressure the quarterback. And see, and see if he can get it to the wide receivers. Here are the linebackers again. They're going to blitz. Now watch as the offensive line does a nice job, and Cannell sees it coming. He gets back, allows his receiver time to run his route. That's the way to do it. And he's got a first down at the 28-yard line. Notre Dame. They're coming again. Yep. And this time, Preston steps over it, goes down the middle, touchdown. the lead 16 to 10. Well, that was another blitz. Notre Dame has blitzed about three or four times. It's Crockett, I believe, the fullback that gets a piece of Sadler and the other linebacker. And once you get through that initial line, when the defense blitzes, when you get through that initial line, there is nobody left to make a play. 28 yards on the carry for that red shirt freshman, Rock Preston. Here's a look at it from behind the offense. Those are the two linebackers. Preston gets the ball. See, there's a huge gaping hole in there. McNeil, the offensive guard, 68, does a nice job. Actually, the fullback got two, knocked yeah, two guys he, down. Yeah, he, huh? he did. <laughs> like the bowling ball. Yep. Terrific block. Mosley is two yards deep in the end zone. <laughs> oh, hello. He's out close to the 40. Quarter is over. Back with more. Uh, the Notre Dame-Florida State game after this message and the word from our ABC station. The final quarter of play, Florida State 16, Notre Dame 10. The Irish have the football, first down at their own 38-yard line with Beckton at tailback and Zellers at fullback and Paulus, the quarterback. Pressure coming from the backside, the pass is away, and he leads the fullback Zellers too much, and it is incomplete. Total yardage big in favor of uh, Florida State. Notre Dame only being able to rush for 91 yards. And then the bottom, about 10 minutes time of possession in favor of the Seminoles. 67 plays to only 35 for Notre Dame. That's 32 more plays for the... Wallace gives it to Kinder. Kinder all the way to the Florida State 40-yard line and a first down. Corey Fuller made the tackle. Fresh legs. Kinder has uh, not played a lot today because of the uh, 
the healthy uh, situation with Becton. But Keith, you're so right. Florida State has dominated this game. Florida has a chance to win it. I mean, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, Florida State. Florida State's in trouble. Eight minutes to play. There's your option. It's the first one today, and it works. Beckton to the 20. 19. First down, Notre Dame. I think the lack of the option, like I said, was just because of the uh, admitting that Florida State has so much speed. You don't want to run east and west too often, but Holtz waited until the fourth quarter to really get the option outside. That was a good time to call it. First down at the Florida State 19. Edwards and Beckton in the backfield. Beckton will lose a yard. Darrell Bush inside backer, number 44, first man to arrive. Redshirt freshman. He has been very active this year. It's uh, surprising that a redshirt freshman would start for Florida State. They play a lot of players. Mickey Andrews likes to get a lot of different players in. Has always used that philosophy. Option. Beckton. Not quite the first down. Not quite. Number 11, Devin Bush, is shaken up for Florida State. But he's up walking around now. That gained about eight yards. Well, if you run the option, or if you run a play and it does well for you, you want to get it back in the in the in the thing, the thick of things, and call it again. And Holtz did that. He caught it earlier in this drive. He skipped a couple of plays and he got it right back in there. And both times the option has done well. Edwards and Zellers in the backfield. It is third and a long two. And timeout called by Florida State. So the defensive folks won a conference. No six to go in the ball game. It is third down and two. The ball is sitting at just inside the 12 yard line of Florida State. Lee Beckton and Ray Zellers are in the backfield for Notre Dame. Big play. Option. Beckton turns up field. Took a wallop, and he is short. He is short of that first down marker. Number 90, Derek Alexander was the man who turned him away. Holtz calls the plays, and he knows what is going well for him. He goes back to the option a third time. This time, Florida State gets up and stops him short of the first down. Here comes Alexander right there. Randy Kinder is in. The Irish have no choice. They've got to go. Fourth and two. Call us to throw it. Throws it. Touchdown! Derek May. satisfied with the crystal they're not satisfied with the silver they want the family jewels and they're trying to get them right here as Scott Senja goes for the lead on the extra point Goodness. 
That's like getting kicked in the stomach for that bunch of offensive linemen. Yeah. Here's another look at it. Both kickers have missed field goals. When one missed a field goal. This missed the extra point to put him ahead. Hits the goal post. Florida State has changed kickers this year, and so has Lou Holtz. Oh. Well, it's been that kind of year, Lou. <laughs> I know exactly what he's going to say when the game's over. He's going to say, if you can't make an extra point, you don't deserve to win. It's been that kind of year, Keith. His kicking has not been good. His special teams, his kickers, his offensive line has been injured. He started the year without a, a quarterback that had ever taken a snap at Notre Dame. He gets his, the strength of his team is his two running backs. He loses them for four or five games. It's just been that type of year. Rock Preston and Tiger McMillan now are the deep people for Florida State. 16-16 tie with 5-17 to play. That's a lot of time for Florida State. A lot of tools. It's a high kick. It's not too deep. It is Tiger McMillan at the 16. <laughs> kind of late getting started, but finally gets the wheel spinning and gets it out to near the 33-yard line. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Now, here it is. We've started it. Here's Paulus here. He has rolled out. That's going to buy him some time. The receiver is here. He's open, but he's going to go down and run a curl in the back of the end zone. Now, watch the defensive back. He comes up to play the out, and then he goes like an out and up. And this is a nice throw. These two guys have really locked in on each other all year. Derek Mays and Ron Paulus. It's been a good combination for the Irish. Now it's up to Danny Cannell to see whether or not he can lead uh, Surge to respond. He's 13 out of 26 for 136 yards. He's got McCorvey wide open. He's got it. McCorvey broke away from Brian McGee, and the ball was on the money. Well, McCorvey is on McGee, who is the free safety, because they had the little corner blitz again. This is a nice throw by Cannell. Makes a big play. He's missed a couple of long passes earlier, but he hits on the one that he needs. A Corby six catches, 97 yards. First down at the 19. Messon is in at the wideout position. Bucket, the fullback. Rejuvenated as he bounds down through there. Picks up about six yards. Suddenly, the hopes and optimism of Florida State is soaring again after that big play. Davis suffering on the Irish side. Hard to handle McCorvey all day. Yes. He's pretty good. Yes, he is. He's an outstanding player. Came in with 173 receptions. The old-fashioned way. First and goal at the seven. If I got 245 pounds of angry bull, <laughs> I'm going to let him sick them. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Crockett doesn't get an opportunity very often in this offense. Normally, it's a pass-oriented offense. First, the ball goes to the wide receivers. Then it goes to the tailback to carry the football. And then, as an afterthought, it goes to the fullback. And, you know, they had a fullback. There's McCarvey. He came in to the, uh, to the game today with 173 career receptions and 16 touchdowns. But... They had a good, pretty good fullback here last year by the uh, name of uh, William Floyd. We didn't get a lot of respect around here, but the uh, went, in the, went in the first round of the NFL draft. 78 plays, 506 yards for Florida State. So far. This time it goes to the tailback. And Warwick Dunn, who's had a bit of a breather, slams his way to the five. It'll be second down and goal from the five. 
Warwick done on the day, 28 carries, 159 yards. And he doesn't have a sore shoulder. Rock Preston, 10 carries, 162 yards. Hey, what yards. happened? And they play the same position on the same yeah. team. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Now, you know, Florida State has had some uh, field goal problems in the past also. Certainly have. I mean, you don't want to just sit there and say, we'll just kick the field goal and win this game. It's just done again. Got loose, touchdown! Watch for number 55 on this play in white. And watch 69, that's McNeil, the guard. McNeil gets a nice block. The seal off. You gotta hand it to Dunn and Preston, but that offensive line led by McNeil and Shiver has done an outstanding job. Oliver Gibson just missed his quarry. The kick is good. And it's now Florida State 23 and Notre Dame 16. And Florida State responded pretty quickly. Yes, they did. Two minutes and 53 seconds to play as Mosley makes the catch at the three-yard line. And had a chance. If he comes left, he had a chance up the middle. But they take him down at about the 26-yard line. Very few flags in this ball game today. An impressive lack of them. Now with the scrimmage play, it'll be 2.45 to uh, go in the ball game. Notre Dame has two timeouts remaining. Dramatically correct to say two times out. But we keep it in sports vernacular so Dave Burns can understand it. <laughs> Randy Kinder and Ray Zellers. This is Kinder. And they jump him pretty good. That's Derek Brooks and Daryl uh, Bush. And uh, Clifton Abraham. <laughs> Numbers for Warwick Dunn. That's only half the story, too. He had the tough stuff. Second down and nine. Wallace. Throws it away. Chuck Rowe, some four years ago, heard about the possibility, figured out the possibility to match these guys because the Irish were losing a game when Penn State went into the Big Ten. Lo and behold, he started hunting and searching and talking and poking and made it all come together today. And the crowd is the largest crowd ever at the Florida Citrus Bowl. 72,868. Paulus gets it up high. Mary is trying to run under it. Very good coverage on him. Number four, Corey Fuller. Outstanding quarterback for Florida State right in his pocket. Well, they had a uh, little blitz on to put some pressure. You got to jam. Ball's in the air. Now you can't jam him after the ball's in the air. It's just good coverage and a tough throw. Ball is at just outside the 28 for Notre Dame. And it's fourth and nine. 159 to play. And here's the old ball game. Perhaps right here. Depends on the spot. Nobody open. I mean, there was nobody available to throw the ball to. If he doesn't have it, Florida State gets it. He didn't get his first down at the 28-yard line. Didn't make. 
wicket. Well, Keith, here is, we're into the play. Paulus has dropped back. You mentioned there's nobody open. Here's one of the receivers. Here's another receiver. Here's his third and only other receiver that he has out. And as you can see, none of them were open. It's then that he scrambled. Now he takes off running and nobody uncovers. Until he crosses the line of scrimmage. And so the Knowles will take over. They, he gets it where the, where he was downed, if you will. So it's not the 28, but the 36, Preston and Crockett. And they'll just grind it out. Now, Notre Dame has two timeouts remaining, so they can kill the clock a couple of times. We get a little pushing and shoving out in the middle of the field out there, but no big deal. We are coming up on a minute and a half to play in the ball game. Here's the story of the game right here. The two running backs, the two tailbacks for Florida State. Both over 160 yards, both having a touchdown. And you got to give a, a big plus to that offensive line of Hernandez, Tyre, Shiver, McNeil, and Fordham. And Laureano has been in there also. Second down and 10. Rock Preston on that carry. Nebraska and Iowa State, Jimmy Walden's gone at Iowa State. I understand that Gary Gibbs may be gone from Oklahoma. So there are going to be some changes this year in college football. This is Rock Preston. And a couple of yards on the play. But these two old wizards that have been matching wits here in the Citrus Bowl this afternoon will be back again and heard from again and again and again. Holt says that uh, he talks to a lot of coaches during the season and throughout the offseason, but he says there's not many that he just calls to talk to and just to chat. And Bobby Bowden is one of those that he does that with. Uh, I think these guys are uh, really uh, friendly, and not just in coaching terms, but just like each other's company. Utah trying to roll along in the whack. Boston College big over Syracuse, 31 to nothing. The uh, team in yellow is the winning team. I think Syracuse has just completely run out of people and out of gas. Their tank's empty, probably by now. It kind of died out the second half of last week's game against yep. Miami. Well, the little brown jug is still in doubt. <laughs> What they put in that little brown jug there, Hoss? Hey, lad. <laughs> Tis enough to make you tingle. <laughs> Fourth down. They need seven yards. 54 seconds to play in the ball game. And I would think they would punt here. Little pooch. Get toward the corner. Oh, it kicked the other way. And rolled into the end zone. Well, he needs to go practice his pooch kicking. Yeah, the, the thing there was just get it off. Just get it over the line of yep. scrimmage. Don't let him block it. He had in mind angling it toward the right corner, but it kicked the other way. So here you go with 48 seconds. Isn't that what it says? 48 seconds. 23-16. Notre Dame will get one more shot. They don't go away. They're 80 yards away. And Florida State leads by seven. Well, you got all the experience out there. You got Beckton, you got Zellers. And here's Paula stepping away from the pressure. Knocked out of bounds. Knocked out by Abraham. Talk about some good on-the-job training. Ron Paulus right here is getting it. Holt said that it wasn't his plan to come into the season without any experience in the quarterback position. That's the way it turned out. He had planned on getting Paulus some snaps and some experience last year as a true freshman, but he broke his collarbone twice and was out for the year. He's 9 of 20, 83 yards, two interceptions, and one touchdown. Second down and eight. The ball is at the 22. Pressure coming, throws it out, throws it high, had to get rid of it in a hurry. 
because uh, thunder was coming down the back of his neck. Paulus is uh, down and getting up very slowly. Peter Boulware. Well, he took a hold. I mean, Boulware just got all of it. Yeah, he did. It was, it was a screen. He was unblocked. And, uh, you know, Paulus has won the respect of these, these teammates, even though they're much older. He is the leader because of the beating and the battering. He just gets up, doesn't say anything. Even though it's not his fault, but he just goes back to work at it. And knock him down again. It was Derek Alexander who made that play. So Alexander in successive years has had big games defensively against Notre Dame. You've got to tip the hat to Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator for Florida State, throwing a shutout. Lou's trying to get them to do something. They're walking around as if this is it, and it will be it. Lou's saying, use your head, call a timeout. He didn't have a timeout, but he never got it down on the ground. Now he throws it into the ground, and the game is over. Final score, Florida State 23, Notre Dame 16. And so it is done at the Florida Citrus Bowl.